everybody's aura is now touching into each other's. On some level of awareness, we have all gotten to know each other better just by sitting here. Think about being in an intimate relationship. Do you really learn the most from that person when you're talking? Or do you learn the most when you're just right here with them? And you're just quiet. Your energy is connecting in at a much deeper level. And you're able to get to know each other through that silence. That's why the healthiest relationships have comfortable silence. When we don't have comfortable silence, it's because we've not allowed our energy to mesh and meld, so we're trying to get to know each other here. If we allow ourselves to connect on an energetic level, we get to know each other on a much deeper capacity, much quicker. When the flow of energy is strong and easy, then we are in health, full of expression, and generally happy. When blockage or under overstimulation occurs, it can adversely affect everything from mood to health and even spiritual growth. Everything in our experience affects the chakras, the food we eat, the environment we're in, the attitude we hold, and the company we keep are just a few of the examples of what can affect our chakras and therefore our overall state of being. Chakras can be cleared and energized through meditation, breath work, visualization, toning stones, energy healing, magnetic therapy, and so many other things that it would take pages and pages and pages to listen on. So as an overview, that's the base information that I want everybody to get today. Now granted, we can go on and on and on about what each one of them does. What I was hoping to illustrate today is the way the energy flows so that you understand the actual inner construction of your energetic self. So that when you say, I'm going to breathe in red, you know that you're actually drawing this energy up here to the red chakra. And what that means, grounding, rooting, security, safety, vital energy. And then they're going to come up here, and here, and here. And we begin to understand that flow. We see where our aura comes from, and we realize that trying to quantify what affects the chakras and what doesn't affect them is actually a foolish way of looking at it. Everything. Everything has potential to make them better. Everything has potential to make them worse. So before we go into our last exercise of the day, I want to know what questions there are. I've thrown a lot of stuff at you. If you've been to a chakra workshop before, you probably covered different stuff than what we talked about today. That was my hope anyway. So I want to know what questions anybody has. Comments, questions, thoughts, feelings. So when you're talking about balancing, you know, like the male versus the female or whatever is in or out of whack, can that translate directly? Like, for me, I think in like terms of Ayurveda, right? So does that translate, do you feel like, directly into like, could you say, oh, your masculine chakra side is out of whack, and does that mean the same as like, your pit is too high, like? It, the doshas, which is what you're talking about, pada, uh, pitta, vada, kapha, are we familiar with doshas at all? Doshas, just a real quick run through, was the easiest way I've ever found to explain them to anybody. <clears throat> You can tell which somebody is dominant in, in the way they respond to you calling them that. Vada is very airy. Vada is the, the space cadet of the doshas. And if you say to somebody, you're Vada, they go, yeah, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Kappa is grounded and heavy and a little slower moving and that sort of energy. So if you look at somebody and you go, your cup of, they'll go, I know. <laughs> <clears throat> Pitta is type A personality. You say, you're Pitta, and they're like, you're damn right I am. <laughs> that pretty well explains the doshas in a nutshell. It gets more complicated, but you get the basic idea. So what she's asking about is, does the imbalance there affect the doshas, or does a doshic imbalance affect the way the chakras work? The, the simple answer is yes, we're whole beings. Everything touches everything else. So when a person is tri-doshic, um, keep in mind there's no such thing as a good dosha. The, the doshas are all things we're trying to reduce within ourselves. 
So if you've got, to use your example, an overactive pitta, if you're very pitta heavy in your dosha constitution, then yeah, you may have an overactive pingata. You may have an imbalance towards the masculine energy within the chakras. Keeping in mind that none of the chakras themselves are masculine or feminine. The Eden and the Pingala are covering that. So in my way of looking at it, I would say that Pitta and Pingala go together, Kappa and Ida go together, and Vada would be the Shishuna. So you've got masculine and feminine trying to come together, and whenever we come out of balance with that, the doshas, whenever we come out of balance with our emotions, whenever we get rigid in our thinking, we're beginning to throw the chakras off, and depending upon what that emotion, thought, dosha, whatever is specifically pertaining to, it'll tell you which one of the chakras, or which one of the um, places where Ida and Pingala connect, where that imbalance is. So you can understand. You can work with them that way. There isn't an actual direct right. correlation that way, but once you have an understanding of both systems, they marry together perfectly. Basically. Yeah, they're, they're very much interrelated in that sense. In any of them, whether we're talking doshas or chakras, we're ultimately wanting to get everything operating in concert with one another. In doshas, we refer to it as balance because ideally you want all three of them to be in equal proportions within you. That makes you a very balanced person. To relate that to the chakras, you want all chakras open, flowing equally, which is what most people refer to as balanced, even though they're not going to be balanced based on what you're doing. Anybody else? Yeah. Is there something to the num numbers of the leaves on the lotus for each of the chakras? There are the, the pictures that went around. If you go into Ayurveda, if you go into ancient um, Hindu and Sanskrit and all that sort of stuff, they will talk about how many different petals are on each lotus. They'll, they'll talk about the different lotuses, lotus eye having the different ones. You'll notice this one has so many we can't count. The crown is considered to be the thousand petal lotus. So it really you start with just the basic. I love the four at the root because you're drawing on the four cardinal directions to exist within the earth plane. You're taking all four of the elements, air, earth, fire, and water, to be able to exist in a physical capacity. And then as you rise up, you get more petals to your lotus because you're rising up into a higher vibration. So you can look at it very easily as the number of petals is a representation of the vibrational frequency under which that chakra is operating when at an optimal point. How's that for my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> now I'd like all of you to repeat that back to me. <laughs> See? No chakra, well, no enough. <laughs> Anybody else? So we've got... Mother Nature doing some sound effects. That's going to be fun for what we're doing. That will be the white noise in the back of what we're doing. Um, before we get to the tones, I did, I did want to show one other thing. Stones are a wonderful thing to be able to work with the chakras. You can use all sorts of different things, like essential oils, incense. Most of you probably noticed when you came in the fragrance of the air. Some of you probably recognize it as Nag Champa. We, we burn that in yoga most of the time. The reason I use Nag Champa or sandalwood almost exclusively in yoga classes, it works with all seven of the chakra points. So it's a universal chakra tone. Sandalwood, frankincense, vanilla to a certain degree, and then different oils will affect different ones that are there. Uh, rose oil at the heart makes a great deal of sense. Orange oil, like citrus orange, for the second chakra, makes a lot of sense. Stones are another thing that is very useful, laying on of stones, carrying them in your pocket. Uh, I have learned through the years not to give them to my mother because they always end up in her bra and then in the washer, and I get them back after they've been in the lint trap. 
Uh, <laughs> this one that I brought today, I just love picking on my mother. I wish she was here. It makes it more fun when she's here. It is. What I'm going to pass around here is a piece of spectrolite. Spectrolite, also known as labradorite, it, it comes from the same place as the dogs. It's also known as a wizard's stone. Spectrolite charges each one of the chakra points and the aura. As it's passed to you, you will instantly see why. All you have to do is look at it and wiggle it around in the light, and you'll understand why it is an amazing stone for charging the chakra points and the aura because of the flash of color that's in there. Basic rule of thumb, and please understand it's not limited to this. Take a stone that's the color of the chakra you're working on. You cannot go wrong that way. You cannot go wrong with a clear quartz for any of them. You can use different ones on diff different colors on different chakra points. You're not going to hurt yourself. The number one rule, as with all things energetic, your intention is far more important than the actual action. If you start Nadi Shodhana and you exhale on the left side first instead of the right side, your chakras are not going to implode, you're not going to be crumpled up like a dish rag on the floor crying, it's not going to hurt you. If you set the intention that it's going to help, it will help. We had a healing night here not long ago, 17 people in this room laying on hands with each other. I had people at first who were like, I don't want to mess somebody up. I said, are you holding the intention of messing them up? Because if you are, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Beyond that, there's no way you can harm somebody if you're holding love and helping in your mind. So setting the intention is one of the most important things. So years ago, in a yoga class, one of the, um, the first studio I ever had an office in, we were downtown across from Springfield Brew Co. Wonderful, amazing guy named Coburn made chakra tones for us. That's what this big calliope looking contraption is here. The tones are one of the things that I think affects people the most. Many of you have had <laughs> sessions with me or have probably seen the tuning forks. There's actually a set of tuning forks, and I actually offer this as a session, shameless self-promotion in place, for each one of these. It's probably fairly hard to hear that where you are. If you actually hold this up to the ear, much louder, much clearer tone. When I actually have you in session working on these, I will have you laying on a, a massage table in front of me, toning these in the ears. For women, root, I start in the left ear because it corresponds to Eda flowing in the body. With men, I start in the right ear because it has to do with Pingala flowing into the body. Then I alternate which ear I start with, with each tone that I go up, balancing left and right brain hemisphere, balancing Eda and Pingala, charging the chakras with the actual tone. The tone's right, so if you get to one that sounds like that to you, it means you're out of balance, not the tone. These don't change. So this is a big set of those. So what we're going to do to close out in the last 10 minutes that we have here today is we're going to go through our last exercise. Yeah, believe it or not, we've gone through two hours already. So we're going to go through each of these. This is a dual chakra set. You'll notice there's more than seven of them. When we talk chakras, once we get to chuck, here would be what I commonly refer to as the star chakra. In a manner of speaking, this is the root chakra of the astral body. Then we go up, and there's the root chakra of the etheric body. Then there's the root chakra on and on and on and on, all the way up through divinity. So this set actually goes through everything from root to crown, starts over at the star, and goes all the way up to the crown of the soul cell. 
we're going to stick with the lower seven today. We're going to stick with the ones within the physical body. The reason for that is I don't know personally how the energy is flowing with each and every person in this room. If you do not build a solid foundation with the chakras within the physical body, you shouldn't mess with these just like you shouldn't build a house on sand. You want a solid foundation to be able to build on. So we always want to start with those. This tuning fork set has eight. It has the star tone in it. Very rarely will I use that in a session with somebody, especially not the first time. I want to make sure that the seven dominants are firing off the way they need to and the energy is flowing easily before we take it up to that higher point. Because some people, this is a weird way to put it, some people aren't ready to connect in with their soul. You open up that kind of energy and the circuit breaker flips. And they have a negative experience instead of a positive experience. One last thing before we get into this afterthought that, that I want to include, just because a lot of people don't think this way. You have chakras in the palms of your hands. You have chakras in the soles of your feet. You have chakras throughout your entire body. The ones that we're talking about are the dominant chakras of the major energetic system within the body. Now, let's have a little bit of fun with it. This room has chakra points in it. We refer to them as energetic vortexes. Now, if we can think about Eden and Pingala, we all heard of ley lines, the energetic lines that are within the earth. Wherever two ley lines intersect is a chakra point. So the earth has millions of chakras all over it. In a manner of speaking, each planet is a chakra of that solar system. Each solar system is a chakra of that galaxy. Each galaxy is a chakra of the entire universe. So when we start talking chakras, any point where two lines of energy intersect one another, creating a vortex of energy is actually a chakra point. So when the alternator isn't firing in your car, and that line of energy isn't intersecting with the ignition, the chakra point that starts your car is on the fritz and it doesn't turn over. So the car has chakra points. Your house has chakra points. There's not anything that doesn't. One of my favorites is working with animals. I told you I was going to tell the story. Mm -hmm. We were a group one night playing with the tuning forks. This one group was at my house. My cat, Sunny, as she always does in such instances, comes out, makes the rounds. Uh, it's your turn to pet me. Thank you. She makes her way around <laughs> to everybody. People welcome my So she comes, and, and I'm sitting cross-legged, and I've got the tuning forks out, and I'm explaining them. And the cat comes and lays down right in front of me. And somebody says, well, are, are the animals susceptible to them? I said, let's see. And I point the tuning fork at the cat. She rolls over, exposing <laughs> her belly, which happened to be the tuning fork that I used on. She exposed the exact chakra. Everybody's like, where are the chakras in the animals? Really? <laughs> You're not ready for the workshop we just had, if that's the question. <laughs> she exposes her belly, and it's the one that we're working. Second chakra tone, and the cat's just like, okay. They respond very much energetically to it. So if you find that your animal is having a difficult point, don't just pet them. Pet where that energy vortex is. Think male and female and pet it in the direction that that energy should be moving. Remember to face the same way they do. It'll make it easy. <laughs> it gets very confusing very quickly. So we're going to go through our last exercise, which is going to be a toning exercise. We started out with us making noise. This one, we're going to let that make noise. 
The beautiful thing about these um, pipes is that they go for a long time. With that being said, we're probably going to run over just a couple of minutes today. If anybody absolutely has to be somewhere right after four, you may excuse yourself and I thank you for coming. Otherwise, we're going to step into this. I don't know how long it will take us, maybe five to ten minutes, something like that. So, we all have the colors. If we need to, we can look here for a visual aid. If we can, we'll go internal, close the eyes. And we're going to go through these tones. So let's all close the eyes, get settled in, take the awareness to the root. Now, I'm not going to tell you inhale, exhale, because I want you to breathe long, slow, deep breaths. And I want you to think about, and this is the part that may sound a little interesting, thinking about matching this tone. So without making any noise at all, I want you to hum with your entire body. I want you to allow your energy to match this vibration. I'm going to just go through them. So we're starting at root and each tone will go up one chakra because I just want you to have the experience. our eyes closed, I want to take us through one last exercise. This will not be for all of the chakras, but this is the idea of what I call angelic toning, which is when we begin to blend those chakra vibrations into a greater effect through chords. So keeping the eyes closed, breathing nice and slowly.
Granted, that was a very short roundup. But I cannot imagine anybody who listened to the chords at the end that wouldn't feel better. And the point that I want to make with that is that through that, we were getting the chakras, not just focusing on one tone, focusing on them working together. Because ultimately, when everything is firing off at once, when everything is radiating and operating at full peak capacity, when the energy is flowing smoothly, freely, easily, energetically, we become an amazing concert. We become an entire philharmonic orchestra of ourselves. And our life becomes the greatest composition ever. And we truly become this vibrational expression that is no different than sitting in an orchestra and hearing that amazing symphony that's coming to you. So when you allow yourself to step into that free flow, easy, energetic state of living, when you balance Ida and Pingala, when you open the Shushumna, and you allow the chakras to radiate, drawing in amazing energy and sending out something equally amazing, then you really do become a concert unto your own self. With that in mind, that's everything I've got for today. Next month, Grace and I will be partnering up for the second Saturday workshop. We're going to be moving with love, eating from the heart. So we're going to be discussing partners yoga and things that you can do together to open the heart more fully. And she's going to be discussing proper foods that nourish us not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually and intellectually as well. I hope you guys will come back and join for that. Uh, thanks for coming today. I appreciate you all very much. Did I mention that there are charts for something? <laughs>